peace and grand rising to the sovereign original indigenous natural divine earth. All rise and stand. This is the sovereign ancient living Article 3 Al Moroccan Moorish American court action. I am sovereign living justice Pauline Denise Ritchie in Capital City, New Shonolo, in Red Inc. In Propio Persona Sejuris, in Propio Solo, and in Propio Heredes. My free chosen sovereign appellation is Light Tajiri Bay. In Capital City, New Shonolo, in Red Inc. In Propio Persona Sejuris, in Propio Solo, and in Propio Heredes. Our energy, faith, credit, um, allegiance is vested in ourselves, for we are the original indigenous du jour, Moorish National Republic Federal Government. We are the ancient living state of Morocco. And um, with this, that is the law, Islam. So with regard to those who are on our land, the foreign modern Europeans who are on the land, um, just as long ago before we started recording, you were talking about what they're saying and what they're doing uh, in terms of, of – um, how to proceed on our land. Yes, they see what's happening with us. They already know that we've returned. And they have a choice, a life and death choice. And when I say life and death choice, this is what I mean. It's either going to be stand as the living subjects of the more or suffer commercial death. Suffering commercial death is they cannot use those dead characters that they've been playing because they've been, they've been acting and playing roles and, and, and being the acting CEOs and the acting this and the acting that, acting president, acting governors and all of that. They've been the actors and now it's time to be the living subjects of the moors. And anyone who's in those who was in those acting roles, whether it be court clerks or acting as judges or acting as policy enforcers or police or acting as law enforcement or and all of that, all of that, the liens say that the liens by court action say you can't do that because we're the real ones and we're here. We're awake, we're alive, we can see. Okay? And if any continue to act in those roles, to see there can't be two heads. Uno Sanctum says that there cannot be two heads. There must be one head. Okay? And we are that head. We are the head of the land of the quote-unquote church, and church does not mean what they say it means. Church means government. Ecclesia is a term that the Christians use quite a bit. Ecclesia in our ancient uh, time was just the Senate, the government. That's what Ecclesia is. And Uno Sanctum mentions the Catholic Church. Well, the Catholic Catholic in all lowercase letters means universal. It doesn't even mean what they capitalized it to mean. Okay. So we're all of that, the Roman pontiff. All Moors are the Roman pontiff. And the last line in Unum Sanctum says that everyone is under the Roman pontiff. That's all of us. Everyone is under all Moors on this land. We have implemented Unum Sanctum here on our land in our favor. So they have to choose. And we can see, I've, I've been kind of keeping, you know, I, I glance over there every now and then and see that they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They're getting in alignment with the Constitution and, and, and the law. They're returning to what they call their roots which is what they should be doing. Many of them have gone back to the original places where they landed when they got here and saw our faces waiting at the shore. Why? Because we used to see the boats coming. And when we saw the boats coming, we would all go to the shore 
and say who 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 goes there, and then we would tell them whether or not they could get off the boat and come onto the land. We said, hold it, you can't come on here yet, and they honored that. When those three boats came here originally, the 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 Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, they stayed out there on the water for three days. And they were hungry and starving and all of that, needed water and all of that. But they would not break the law and come onto the land until we met together like we're doing now. And we said, what do we want to do? Do we want to receive them and what do we tell them? What are the laws for them to get off that boat and come onto the land? That's jurisdiction. And they stayed out there whether they were going to live or die was in our hands. It always has been. And they may have a choice to make. And when we finally let them onto the land, we handed them the law, written out. And we said, give us three days to write this out or however long it takes. Give us as long as it takes for us to write out what we want you to live by when you set foot off that water and come onto this land. And they did it. So they're not lawless unless we're lawless. And by, by lawless, meaning we're pretending to be citizens. That's all. We're not citizens. We're the nobility, period. So, and then we don't really even have to worry about them getting in alignment and doing things like that. Our focus needs to be squarely, firmly on the government, the nation, the empire, which is each other. They're going to do their part because they've been doing their part. They're going to do it. Whatever their part is, they already know it and they will do it, just like every other of our creation. With that being said, are there any other uh, comments or questions about that or wisdom or thank you for the sharing in the meeting Islam. before this meeting, Islam members? Uh, I just wanted to share that uh, Michelle Gibson did a beautiful job and a tribute to the Moors in her latest video that came out yesterday. And she informed the world all this beautiful architecture and all the waterways and and uh, and dam beautiful dams around the world were all from the Moors. Wow. She couldn't say it until we said it. And when I say we, I mean all Moors. We actually had to tell our truth first, and now they are free to to speak. They're no longer under oath not to say what they've known all along. Very beautiful. I'm going to be looking for that video, too, because that's, that's huge. Uh, and when I say huge, we didn't need anyone's validation, but we're glad that they feel comfortable enough that they're not under that oath, because if they're not under the oath anymore, where, what are they doing? They're getting in alignment with the Creator. All we had to do was, was keep doing what we've been doing, we didn't even have to really focus on them, per se. We just need to keep doing the empire work, the ministry work, governing the vast estate, moving forward together, staying together, monitoring and minding our energy. That's all we had to do, and that's all we have to do. Things are speeding up now for us in our favor. Things are speeding up. And so all we have to do is keep doing what we're doing, keep growing, keep learning, keep studying ourselves. And that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. So for those who needed that validation, because some, some need, need to hear it from the hybrid. You got it. Again. So enjoy it. Islam. Islam. Islam mobility. Yes, it's like I have a question. It's Dawu from mm -hmm. South Carolina Territory. Um, mm -hmm. What's the uh, so Sovereign Delorium? 
Um, mm -hmm. Should we apply the uh, sovereign um, Social Security to the DeLorean? You can if you want to, because your so but your sovereign autograph with the right red thumbprint is enough. But yeah. if you want to do that, you can. And now that I think about it, that's not a bad idea in red. Right. Because that would mean that it's coming from your estate. Right. And it would match Even the Even for those who may not be able to read the, the autograph, they can read the sovereign security number in red with no dashes. Right. And, I, and the reason I asked that question was, excuse me. Go ahead, my brother. Oh, I'm sorry. The reason I asked that. The reason I asked that question was uh, trying to make sure that it matched the uh, title work and the paperwork when we're, yes. when we're presenting. Yeah. Okay. That makes complete sense, Nobility. Thank you. Yes, Mom. Thank you. That makes complete sense. Uh, and I had a mom who gave a donation this past weekend who, who did that. They came from a little ways away and, and uh, needed some assistance with the documents and things, so... They, and they have a red stamp that has their sovereign security number on it, no dashes in red. They had it made specifically, and they just stamped that right on the DeLorean, too. I was like, that's a great idea. So, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, that's our topic today, by the way, Justice Dabu. So thank you for that segue. Islam. So, Islam. What we want to talk about is legal tender, okay? Because, you know, we know that delirium is lawful money. We know that. I'm going to put in the chat uh, what we – oh, thank you, Empress, uh, for putting the link to Michelle Gibson's video in the chat. Thank you for that. Um, I'll go. I'll put that under. Uh, I'll put that under uh, the video as well. Thank you. So, what we want to talk um, about is the delirium, and is it, and 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 how to further enforce it. Okay, because more have been wanting to know how to enforce the delirium. Okay, we need to know what it is in order to further enforce it. Okay, so I said, okay, let's just look at what, because see, legal tender is something that is accepted in a certain jurisdiction. Lawful money, we know it's accepted in our jurisdiction, which is constitutional. So now all we need to do is extend our jurisdiction out to everywhere on the land. And our jurisdiction goes where we go, and it does what we do. So let's talk, let us define legal tender so that you can see that what they were using was not legal tender unless we agreed that it was legal tender, which we had agreed that fiat was legal tender at one point, but it's not any longer. And you can't, it's not going to be, you know, a back and forth thing with, with the lion. It is both lawful and legal. But let's define legal as well, legal tender. Um, I put in the chat, the one of the definitions, according to Wikipedia, and we know Wikipedia is is, is uh, hypothecated. Okay, but we look at it and then we weed out anything that's not uh, lawful. But um, I looked up legal tender or tender in the dictionary, and I use both Black Law Dictionary, which I'll show you in just a moment, and then I also use the 1828 Unabridged Webster Dictionary. What is tender? Tender 
in the verb transitive, it means to reach out or stretch out, okay? And like we just said, when you're talking about methods of exchange, method, the method of exchange, the method of payment determines the law that's being used. How do we extend our territory? How do we extend our jurisdiction to the grocery store? How do we extend our jurisdiction to the state court? How do we extend our jurisdiction all over the land? Because that's what we're really doing when we start putting delirium out everywhere, like we're doing. All we're doing is extending and enlarging our territory. Okay? So to stretch out, to present for acceptance, to offer. And acceptance is a word that we've talked about previously where some talk about um, um, accept it for value. And we'll talk a little bit about how, how, how all of that is directly connected to the more and our use of delarium in that we, we this, the economies don't have a choice. They don't get to say whether they accept the law or not because they're the debtor. Only the creditor gets to determine what, what the exchange method is because we're actually putting the law forth there. Number two, uh, tender says to offer, and let me just make sure that, that the screen is showing here. Okay, good. Yeah, it's showing. Um, Number two, to offer in payment or satisfaction of an obligation as to tender the amount of rent or debt. Now, let me say this about tender and about offers in payment or satisfaction of an obligation. We don't have the obligation nor the debt. We're actually offering them a way to get out of their obligation or to satisfy their obligation and their debt when we give them the largest. We're actually saying, we know you're the debtor and we know you don't have anything to pay with. So here, redemption for you by way of the more and the, the delarium. That is what redemption really is and only the Christ nation can bring redemption to the earth. So we're saying here, take this and we'll take whatever service or good is there. Now your debt is paid. Your debt is paid. We, we're we're going to pay your, your obligation, your debt, by giving you this salarium. And then you give us whatever service you have. And that is actually uh, what we've been saying all along, that debts are prepaid. We're just prepaying. We're saying, here you go. Now give us whatever, whatever you have. And then tender, an offer of money or services made to satisfy an obligation in order to avoid prosecution. The debtor has the... Has the uh, is, is under the quote-unquote threat of prosecution, not the creditors. So when we give them the delarium and they accept the delarium, which they will, then their debt is paid. We're actually paying their debt by giving them something that we have plenty of. That's how the state works. That's how debtor and creditor trust law work. The creditor who has everything says, okay, we know you got a debt. We're not going to judge you subject for the debt. What we're judging is the corporation status, that overlay. Yeah, that thing does not come from anyone's womb. Corporations don't come from anyone's womb. Okay. Um, there is a little bit of an echo coming from one of the lines. Okay. Hold on just a moment. Just a moment. Yeah, there's a little bit of an echo coming from there. Okay. 
So, tender now a formal offer as of marriage, contractual term, et cetera. Now, when you talk about contracting, giving them the delarium for the good or service is a contract, but again, the use of the delarium determines the law and the terms of that contract. And the terms of the contract go all, see, we don't have to contract with them. They got a constitution that they agreed to that that's the contract. So we're not, it's not, and we gave that as a as an affidavit. We didn't even give that as something where we all sit down at the table and we hash out and negotiate. No, we didn't have to negotiate. We just said, we looked back into our ancient law and said, this is what we're aligned with. Let's give them the same thing. And we gave them the same thing, but what did it do? It created an obligation on their part because they're the debtor. They needed our land. They needed to come here and, and use our resources to build Microsoft and Nike and Apple and uh, Tesla and Berkshire Hathaway and the grocery stores and all of that. Whenever you look at a grocery store, you're looking at a, someone who is in debt to the more. When you look at conveyance dealerships, what they call car dealerships or auto dealerships, you're looking at a debtor, someone who owes the more. So giving them delirium allows them to it relieve some of that debt. so that they can avoid being prosecuted for being a debtor. You've heard of debtor's prison? Okay. That means you, if you're acting in corporate status, yes, you do go to debtor's prison. But as a standing, living subject of the Moors, there's redemption. Because that means that you're willing to, to do, at, do what the law says, to obey the law. Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution that we gave you. So, number three, something offered in payment, especially money. As the currency of any country is legal tender in that country, whether they accept delirium or not has to do with where they think they are. If they think that they're in the United States Corporation Company, oh, this is the United States. We don't accept that here. That's not legal tender. Then, okay, to, to corporate prison for you by way of lien and court action. That's what the liens and the court actions do. They say if you're acting in all caps and dead ink, then... Anything dead has to be moved off our land because we're the living. We speak life to everything and everyone. So now when you send the court to, to, to jail, you have left standing before you a subject, a living subject, who is going to follow the law no matter what. They will give their lives for, to follow the law if they had to. But we speak life. We don't speak death. So we're offering that, and offer is really command, because the Constitution says so. And these are things that we can just inculcate or put into our, our affidavit. And as fiduciaries for the state of Morocco, that's our job, actually is to set the law by the form of payment. Something offered in payment. The currency of any country is legal tender in that country. That's standard. So where are they? They're at the state of Morocco. Period. Therefore, you will take delarium. 
because we don't even have any Federal Reserve debt notes. We don't have any. That's been since 1933, if you want to get technical. There's been no money since 1933. Look at the law. And that all debt is discharged. Right? We're going to look at discharge, too. Now, tender, legal tender. Number one, tender as a noun says, one who attends or takes care of something. Isn't that a fiduciary? When we define fiduciary, we said that's someone who takes care of the money. It's right there in the definition of tender. As a noun, one who attends or takes care of something. Number two is important, too. A small ship employed to attend a larger one. So now we're talking, are, are we lost at sea or are we putting the law in place? Because now we're talking about ships going up and down the Nile River here on our land instead of being out there lost at sea. We're talking merchant action and activity. Also, a boat to supply a larger one close to shore, close to shore, with provisions and other stores, or to carry passengers, etc. So you're talking about travel. And that's why travel was so key in what we just came out of where every time it seems like a moor got on the road, okay, on their land, that they were being pulled over and they were using travel to test the moor. Well, they're pointing to tender. And if you're using their tender, then they get to determine the travel methodology. But now that we're using ours, a, a lot of that pulling folks over and throwing them in jail has slowed down where the moors are concerned, the, the, the moors that are awake. The ones that are asleep, they're still, some, some, some of them will still have to go through that, okay? And it's just to wake them up. And guess what? We will, we will be here for them. Already ready saying, use this, do this, giving them suggestions on how to free themselves further. That's what all of this was for, was to build the bridge so that those who are waking up after us have remedy. They have remedy because we have remedy. Yes, we went through some testing. And some are still being tested. But we have remedy. We just have to put it into effect. It has everything to do with tender. And then tender as an adjective, and we know we don't use adjectives. We're not adjectives. But if you look here at this root of tenuous, means thin or fine. Tender, which is the Latin, is to stretch, to stretch. So we're actually literally stretching out our vast estate when we give delarium for whatever is going on. And you can use delarium for anything because it's legal tender. And again, these, some of these definitions for, uh, a, as an adjective, some sound good and some sound not so good. Easily impressed, broken, bruised, or injured. Not tough, firm, or hard. Delicate in texture. Soft, fragile, succulent. As tender plant, tender flesh, etc. Very sensitive. It, it, yeah. Weak of constitution or physique not hardy, not able to endure hardship. 
tender. Okay, it requires careful handling, number five, that has or expresses affection, love, consideration, gentle, affectionate, as a tender smile. So tender can be what we would consider good or tender can be lower self, okay, either one. It depends on who's issuing the tender. If it's coming from us, it's going to be gentle. It's going to be kind. It's going to be, it's going to bring affection and peace and love. But if it's issued by a corporation, then it becomes weak, immature, young, etc. So now, legal tender. This definition of legal tender comes from the um, Webster Dictionary, 1828, and which is before, it's up for it, so it's before um, 1871. Legal tender, all money that must be accepted for goods purchased and also for the discharge of just debt. Treasury notes are legal tender to unlimited amounts. So people talk about, well, if you all can print as much as you want, it's going to reduce the value. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Treasury notes. Now, we know that a note is a, a, a debt. Well, we're the treasury, and we're extinguishing a debt. They owe it. We created them. But they owe the debt. And so in the Constitution, Article 3 and Article 6, The Constitution mentions all debts prior to this document are still valid. And Delarium is actually addressing that part of the Constitution specifically. That's why Treasury notes are legal tender to unlimited amount, unlimited amount. We're supposed to be able to print as much as we want to print. It's not as many of us doing it, so we, we're going to have to print large, a lot of it in order to assist, in order to get the others to wake up and see that, yes, this is how this is done. When you uh, Sometimes when I'm looking at a word, uh, um, I look at the words around it so that I can see, you know, what else is similar to that. We always talk about uh, delegations of authority. Well, the root word for delegation, the root word for legal, the root word for ligus, the root word for um, like legation, which is the building that's over at the other Morocco. It's called the uh, American Legation Building. The root words are all L-E-G, leg. So when you talk about Allah, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, there's a connection there. We're being given a, a hint. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. We're being given a hint that we are to actually provide the movement of the currency, the movement of and conveyance of property, of of conveyances, of of everything on our estate, both legal and lawful. If you look at the top of the name change and judicial proclamation documents. It has that up there, lawful, and then some of them have legal up there because it actually is. 
It's both. And here, legate. I just kind of took a took a, a a look at this word. It says to appoint, to choose, to send as an ambassador from lex, legis, and law, legate. So that's why when we when we talk about delegations of authority, when you give a delegation of authority, you're saying we're not sending an ambassador. Because D means D means not or no. So we're we're saying don't send the law. So legate is to to choose. Legate and legal is still to choose. L E G really is a choice because when they say people vote with their feet, that's true. Moors vote with their feet. We can say all day long that we're the law, we're the government, and, you know, everyone has to do what we say. We can say that all day long, but if we keep going back to fiat and pushing it and creating other platforms for fiat to flourish, instead of moving towards delarium for everything that we do or gold and silver for everything that we do. Because some, some don't feel that delarium is whatever. Okay, gold and silver then. If you're going to use paper, it should be delarium. That's the law. Or, or some gold-backed currency. Sovereigns are never limited, so let's just put let's so our the platforms that we build from this point forward, the businesses that we build from this point forward should all be delarium based or gold and silver based. Saying we only accept in this business that I'm putting forth here, we only accept gold and silver and delarium. And the more I, I just I love our nation so much. I love our government so much because we've already started doing that. Moors are starting businesses and saying, okay, gold and silver. Then the gold bar or a silver bar, you know, a little piece of silver or something, or some silver coins or gold coins or silver gold jewelry or something in exchange for or delarium in exchange for the product. And many of the more, you know, I've had more come and say, oh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just give it to them. I'll do this for free. And I say, no, don't do it for free. Charge the volume. That will set the tone. So those who own businesses, if you're worried about foreigners coming in talking about we need to do an inspection in here, when you're using delarium or gold and silver, that's outside of their pay grade and their jurisdiction. They can't come in there and do that. You're not using their military script. Therefore, they can't send military soldiers posing as inspectors into your business. Because remember, they're all military. And anyone using their military script is acting in a military capacity. Whether you, I don't care if you're a child on the corner selling lemonade. If you're using Federal Reserve debt notes and exchanging them back and forth, you are enlisted in the, the United States Corporation Company military. So now, uh, acceptance. Because we're still talking about tender. We're talking about legal tender and lawful tender. See, the Constitution mentioned the word tender specifically, to tender something in payment of debt. 
And then it has to be accepted as part of that. Well, the debtor does not have a choice in what they accept. You know, the, the, and I'm not calling them beggars, but beggars can't be choosy. That's what we used to say back in the day. Well, debtors cannot be choosy in what they accept from the creditor in payment of their obligation or else they're risking prosecution. Acceptance, the taking and receiving of anything in good part. And as it were, a tacit agreement to a preceding act, which might have been defeated or avoided if such acceptance had not been made. What are they saying right there? This is from Black Small Dictionary. What they're saying is the preceding act was the Constitution. The Constitution might have been defeated or avoided if we didn't present delarium or gold and silver in the taking and the receiving. And remember this, liens and court actions are gold and silver documents too. That is lawful money too. That's why you can exchange liens for money. And we don't want to continue having the Constitution, quote, unquote, defeated or avoided, because they've been avoiding the Constitution because we've been using their military script. And that's why when some Moors went into those state courts, the, the state judges would say straight out of their mouths, this is not a constitutional court, we don't do a constitution in here, and now you go to jail or whatever, or you pay this fine. Well, that's because someone's been using some military script and they know it. So acceptance is not us asking them to do anything. Acceptance is you owe a debt debtor, and I'm going to help you pay that debt. I'm going to offer redemption because that's what the Christ does, and that's an act of love. That's not an act of war. It's an act of love. Okay, so that's an act of, of love. That's not an act of war to give them delirium. We're actually assisting in their redemption, and then they have a choice to make. And they don't really have that choice. It's either that or commercial death, period. Okay. No, please. No. Uh oh. Islam Empress, welcome. Okay. So, and then acceptance. Let's look at that a, a little further. Just one moment. Let me make sure it's on the screen. It says the act of a person to whom a thing is offered or tendered by another whereby he receives the thing with the intention of retaining it. Such intention being evidenced by a sufficient act. And then here it is down here. Mm 
right there. The exercise of power conferred by an offer by performance of some act. That's acceptance, see? The exercise of power conferred, that means we, see, they, they've been telling us that acceptance is something that it's not. The one doing the accepting is the one who actually made the choice. The one sending, doing the giving, is exercising the power. When we were taking fiat for everything in our sleep, what were we doing? We were accepting and they were exercising the power. And then when we accepted it, they just ran rampant, didn't they? They can give and take and throw away and, and, and throw people in jail and do all types of madness, okay? Because of our acceptance, they were exercising the power of acceptance. So it's our, it's, our, it's our turn to actually put set things right. Set things right. Do the right thing. Exercise the power conferred by an offer. See, the one doing the offering has the power. And when they say conferred, that means it's something being handed to someone. The exercise of the one who's doing the offering, that means that they have something that the other one needs. So who has the power? The one who's doing the offering. And that's why subjects don't own anything. They don't own anything. So when they're offering something to us, they're offering us our own stuff. So the power still stands with the air. By performance of some act, the act is the Constitution. Let's just get that straight. And the Constitution was an act for them. It's the law, actually, issued by us. Goldback Moore Sovereign Delarium can be considered a sovereign banker's note. And we spell note differently because note doesn't mean debt. Note means a, a document or a, an article of papyrus or linen or cotton or paper because what is a, a banker's note? Just one moment. A banker's note in Black's Law First Edition is defined as a commercial instrument resembling a bank hyphen note in every particular except that it is given by a private banker or unincorporated banking institution. A commercial instrument that just looks like a bank, a bank note in every way, except that it's given by the bank, which is the Moors. unincorporated banking institution, the more. So even there, Delarium fits that. And then just as I will talk about um, putting the sovereign security number on the Delarium, that would make it a banker's note, a sovereign bank note.
because when you put the sovereign security number on there in red and all lowercase letters uh, in terms of the, the, the signet, the autograph, the right red thumbprint and all of that, then that, in, that is a clear indicator of not being incorporated because how do corporations write? They present everything in dead ink and capital letters, don't they? Yes. And it's not a bank note, uh, a sovereign banker's note, if it's not in red and all lowercase letters. Unless it's issued by the heirs, I have to put that caveat there. If it's issued by the heirs and we state that it's a banker's note and we use uh, monochrome ink, then it's a banker's note. Because it's coming from the bank. The bank gets to determine what is a note and what is not. Bills of exchange. We're still talking about acceptance and legal tender. And what is Morris Sovereign Delarium in all of this? Does it fit this, these definitions? Bills of exchange. We've heard more talking about bills of exchange. An engagement, and this comes from Black Law. An engagement to pay the bill in money when due. Well, 1933 said there was no money. And now there is, actually. Delarium is money. So uh, any bills of exchange that have been presented thus far, if they've not been paid in gold and silver or more sovereign delarium, is it a real bill of exchange? It doesn't fit the definition because you actually have to use real money to pay it. It says here, uh, and I'll, I'll skip down here. Well, let's see. The act by which the person on whom a bill of exchange is drawn, called the drawee, assents to the request of the drawer to pay it. Now, assent and consent are two different words, and they mean two different things. We assent. We don't consent. Okay, uh, and you can look up the definitions of those prefixes to know the difference. It says, uh, or in other words, engages or makes himself liable to pay it when due. Okay, it says it may be by parole. This is for the more that are that are uh, incarcerated, because one way or another. There are some bills, international bills of exchange taking place when Moors are taken. And Moors have asked, how do I get off of parole? Well, right here in this definition in Black's Law Dictionary, it says it can be by parole or in writing. In other words, an affidavit is just as legal and valid as parole. And lawyers who are thinking that they're on parole really are not, okay? But they have to do the study on the writing and the language that's being used and knowing that they're not any name in dead ink, but they must properly rebut that. You can't just not show up anywhere, you actually have to properly rebut by sovereign affidavit. And delarium, send the delarium, because that's all they were wanting was the commercial exchange to take place. Delarium is legal and lawful. Gold and silver is legal and lawful. But because People forgot where they were. Jurisdiction is determined by the, the payment. Jurisdiction is where are you? Are you at the state of Morocco or the quote unquote state of Washington or the state of Virginia, state of Louisiana, state of Alabama? No, you're not at the state of Alabama and all of that. You're at the ancient state of Morocco and of is spelled O-B, like the Jewish word of because that has meaning also.
And then here, further down with acceptance, it says, but the usual and regular mode of acceptance, okay, is by the drawings writing across the face of the bill the word accepted and subscribing his name, after which he is termed the acceptor. We don't have names, but for those more who were wondering why is it that we put the bright red thumbprint at the top of the page and sign in at a 45-degree angle, et cetera, uh, this is that. This is where that comes from. It says the usual and regular mode of acceptance. That means we accept our own document. And that any debtors must accept it also. Because again, giving the document says, hey debtor, here's your way out of the debt that you owe. See, that's why the citizens have been talking about we have to get rid of the national debt. We have to, we have to pay this down. Our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren are going to be in debt. Well, if, if, if you don't come out of corporate status, yes. But your acceptance of the law given by the heirs to include DeLorean means that your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren don't have to be in debt. They are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Now, they already know all of this about us. We just had to know it. Let's talk about Delarium and this thing called bankruptcy that the United States Corporation Company has been dealing in since day one. What is an act of bankruptcy? It's any act which renders a person liable to be pr proceeded against as a bankrupt or for which he may be adjudged bankrupt. In other words, our courts have judged them bankrupt. But they could not disband until we said it. It says here, these acts are usually defined and classified in statutes on the subject. On the subject does not mean the topic that they're talking about. On the subject means on the heads of the subject. And then it says here, such as insolvency or suffering or permitting a creditor to obtain a preference. That is an act of bankruptcy. Suffering is an act of bankruptcy. I'll say it again because that's key. Suffering is an act of bankruptcy. Our suffering ends when we stop using their military script and use our own. More sovereign delarian. The suffering ends there. Or gold and silver. An act of bankruptcy is permitting a creditor to obtain a preference. Uh, we obtain the preference of we, we choose DeLarium and not United States Corporation, company, military script. This is important where acts of bankruptcy are concerned. An act of bankruptcy is, and this is according to black law, hindering, delaying, or defrauding creditors. Have any more been hindered, delayed, or defrauded? Have any of you been hindered, delayed, or defrauded? Because you're the creditor. That's how you know who the creditor is in this situation. And then here it is. Failure to discharge a lien. It says it right here, right on the screen. Failure to discharge a lien. 
How can they discharge the lien? We have to give them DeLorean to discharge it because our lien said gold and silver currency, coinage, 100 million for each parcel that they've been unlawfully occupying. That's what is supposed to happen with the liens because we've had we've heard some more say, no, you're supposed to lift the lien after they do what you say. No, that lien has to be discharged by them. When you lien them, you make them pay. Well, they don't have anything to pay with. So we're actually giving them something to pay with. We're saying here, your debt is discharged. But it's going to take them a long time to do that. A long time to do that. In fact, it's into perpetuity, really. It's a debt that can never be paid. That's why we can print as much delirium as we want to print. Because no matter how much we print, the debt is still being paid repeatedly. So a, a cart full of groceries at the grocery store is not a hundred million in gold. A conveyance or ten or fifty or a hundred or a thousand conveyances is not a hundred million in gold. That doesn't fit the obligation. It's a drop in the bucket. A drop in the ocean. Failure to discharge a lien. That is an act of bankruptcy. So we're not going to let them fail any longer. We're going to give them delirium so that they can quit failing to discharge the lien because they can't do it on their own. That's what liens are for. Liens show you who's in bankruptcy. Liens also show you who's suffering. And then we give them a way not to suffer. That's our job. That is absolutely our job. There it is. Here, further, where acts of bankruptcy are concerned, permitting creditors to obtain any levy, attachment, judgment, or other lien. That's bankrupt, an act of bankruptcy. They, like I said, they have a choice to make. They can accept what we, the creditor, are putting forth as a levy, an attachment, a judgment, or other lien. They're bankrupt. They've been that from day one. They've never operated outside of bankruptcy, actually. Assignment for benefit of creditors, that's an act of bankruptcy. Or a written admission of one's inability to pay his debt. And this is all fair decisive and red judicata and laws and, and things regarding bankruptcy. A written admission of one's inability to pay his debt. That's an act of bankruptcy. Permitting the creditor to obtain a lien. That's an act of bankruptcy. And we didn't need anyone's permission. We just did it because that's what the ancestors said to do. Lean them. So now let's talk about discharging of debt because we said we were going to talk about that too. What does discharge mean and what's the difference between discharging a debt and paying a debt? 
This charge is to release, to liberate. when they talk about proclaiming liberty throughout the land to all of the inhabitants. That's not done by somebody getting up on a crate and yelling, hey, you're all free. No, no. It's them doing what they're supposed to do by accepting so that their debt is then discharged. They are no longer burdened with the debt. Discharge, to annul, to unburden, disencumber, dismiss, to extinguish an obligation, to remove from employment, absolutely. Discharge, remove from employment. They're subjects. They should have never been employed in the first place. That's what corporations do. They employ. That's what corporations do. They employ. When we said fire them, you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. We showed you a demonstration that we did where we and uh, myself and one of the empresses, the empress had, had uh, gotten a ticket from the corpses. The corpses had handed her, uh, you know, a ticket, and I forget what the ticket was for. I believe it was feeding, a feeding ticket. We did the court action, and we showed you how we did that where she did a court action. She sent 10,000 in Delarium by way of email. She, scanned, she downloaded the Delarium, autographed it in red in all lowercase letters, put her right red thumbprint, scanned it back in, and attached it to an email. And the email was done in court action form, format. She sent the email to me and copied the, the ones that were claiming to issue this ticket, which was the policy enforcers in Miami. And we showed you that in one of the previous videos. And then I did a court action back saying, we recognize you, Empress. You are an Empress in, in our nation. You are the law. You are the government. You're not any name in black ink dead ink and capital letters, you're not any name in, in, in that, but you are in capital simonu shonolo, in red ink, in propio persona si juris, in propio solo, and in propio heretis, as are all more. And this sovereign justice stands as law, that you're not that. What did that do? That, the result of that was, and we showed you, the screenshot of when she went back in and looked to see what was done, that they had actually dismissed the policy enforcer who gave her that. They fired him. They removed him from employment. And they didn't do what she did. And that, that wasn't even the, that wasn't even what she was um, looking to do, but they know the law about debts and discharge and removal from employment. Okay? And then some and, and automatically some will say, well how is he supposed to eat? How is he supposed to feed his family? He can do that as a subject of the more. There's provision for them there. But if he continues to act in a corporate status, there's no provision for corporations. None. Jail. Debt. So let's not get that confused and, and, and say that when you fire someone, they're going to be sleeping under a bridge. No, they won't. There's provision for them. That's why they keep talking about, quote, unquote, universal basic income. And I put that in air quotes because we've made provision for everyone who follows the law. We're going to take care of everyone. Our state is 
vast enough to do that many times over. But the Moors have to stand up and do this. Do this work, govern this vast estate. And I can just hear some saying, how are we going to take care of them when we're not even taking care of each other? We, This is how you do that. We take care of each other by doing this so that no more Moors are pulled over and given a debt and thinking that they have to do this and that and this and that because a corporation said so. That's how you keep Moors from sleeping under bridges and being thrown out and evicted and all of that, is we stand and do what we're supposed to be doing. Lean, court action, it's all in a day's work of governing. That's how you keep Moors off the street. We do our part, and we make sure we send a clear message to these corporations, and then we send an even clearer message to the subjects. And then when they see a more coming, they'll be like, oh, they said they were more. Let's, let's get them on out. Let's, 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 let's make sure that they have what they need so that we don't have to deal with them, because judgment is swift with the more. When they, when they issue judgment, it's swift. And it's precise. And they don't want to be a part of that. Because the Constitution, that's why. <laughs> we put that in place for that. In the law of contracts to cancel or unloose the obligation of a contract, the Constitution is the said contract. The Constitution is that contract. And what do we say at the end of our court action? We speak it in Latin, but we can speak it in, in ancient English, too. Amendico vobis, que cum que sumus veritis super terum et un legata et un quello. Et que cum que sumus so veritis super terum et un saluto et un quello. What does that mean? Whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. There it is right there. That's discharge of debt by our words, written and spoken. To make an agreement or contract null and inoperative, neutralizing. As a noun, the word, and the word that we're looking at is discharge. The word means the act or instrument by which the binding force of a contract is terminated. Irrespective of whether the contract is carried out to the full extent contemplated, in which case the discharge is the result of performance or is broken off before complete execution. Whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. Termination of all corporate contracts. The Constitution, when we gave it to them, was not a corporate contract. So there's no terminating that. There's no one who can, quote, unquote, suspend the Constitution except us, and we've not done that. What did we do? We removed all those fake fraudulent contracts that were sitting on top of the Constitution and the debt and the obligation that they have. That's what liens do. The liens just remove all corporate paper off of the law. And this is by definition, this is, I'm just looking at the dictionary, the Black Law Dictionary. That's what this is right here. It says discharge is a generic term. Its principal species are rescission, release, accord, and satisfaction, performance, judgment, composition, bankruptcy, merger. 
What does that mean? Why are they using the word species? Because that's what money is called. Money is species. Go back and read the um, Coinage Act of 1792, and you will see that money is called species. And when you give the species, the species does something. It releases, it is rescission, accord and satisfaction, performance, judgment, composition, bankruptcy, and merger. In other words, when we use this, then any corporation that was, not, that was claiming to not or acting like they weren't bankrupt becomes bankrupt because their military script is no longer being used. That means that a debt or an obligation was created, and now we're saying, here you go. This is how you pay the debt that you owe us. The debtor does not get to say, well, I want to pay that in uh, Federal Reserve debt. No, no, we don't, we don't accept that. We don't accept that. So who's really doing the accepting? We're doing the command. We give them the delarium. They accept the delarium, and we say, okay, we accept that you have accepted delarium and your debt is paid. It says, as applied to demand, claim, rights of action, encumbrances, these are all financial terms, et cetera, to discharge the debt or claim is to extinguish it, to annul its obligatory force, to satisfy it. And here also the term is generic. Thus, a debt, a mortgage, a legacy may be discharged by payment or performance or by any act short of that lawful in itself, which the creditor accepts as sufficient, not the debtor, the creditor. We're talking about more sovereign demarium. We're talking about legal tender and lawful money. More sovereign delarium is both for those who are not walking around with a handful of gold because you are the gold. Because gold didn't even have value until we said it. So what we say goes. And whenever you're going into any place, it automatically becomes Article Three and constitutional because you're there. Here, it says to discharge a person is to liberate him from the binding force of an obligation, debt, or claim. When we give Delarium, we're actually redeeming and setting them free. Along with setting ourselves free now, let's, let's, let's just put that out there simply because we were acting in as if we were citizens too. There is a distinction between a debt discharged and a debt paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. You're talking about naturalizing and nationalizing resources. Divested of character is where naturalization and nationalization comes in at. When you remove the corporate character, and give it a natural character, then anything corporate is discharged, okay? And discharge is simply leaving the debt with the debtor and, and telling the debtor that debt belongs to you. Who's the debtor? The corporation, not the, not the subject. The subject is not a debtor. 
The corporation is the debtor. And that's just a matter of paper. So when I hear people talking about looking out for the the the, the foreigners, the hybrids, or 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 any subjects here on our land, I hear people talking about that like we're not going to do that. But they have the wrong idea of what that looks like. We're taking care of them when we lean that corporate status and that corporate burden off of them so that their allegiance is no longer to a corporation that's charging them taxes and fiat. And their allegiance then becomes to, if they come under the, uh, um, the sovereign authority of the Moors. Well, when they do that, what are we doing? We're not giving, we're not handing them a tax bill. We're handing them payment, a way to pay their tax bill because they do owe it. Something of the original vitality of the debt continues to exist, which may be transferred, just like we said, the debt then leaves when you send the corporation to Guantanamo Bay and have them decapitated. Decapitated means removed from office. You're removing a corporation from its place where it was unlawfully occupying the status of an office, and you're saying, okay, there's a subject here now. And the subject will do as commanded, that which is lawful. So. You don't have to, you don't have to pay the debt. You can discharge the debt. That's what 1933 was saying. Give the debt to the corporation. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. And unto God that which is God. Well, what belongs to God? Because we're the God. Everything on the land. How do you get that rendered to you? Give them some lawful money. Lean that corporate status and render unto seize her, that which is seized hers. And who sees her going to seize? The harlot. And those who know about the biblical studies of Babylon being known as the great harlot, you know what that's all about. The great harlot was the money, or not the money, the fiat. It says here, even though the transferee takes its subject to its disability incident to the discharge. Yes, the corporation, anyone acting in corporate status suffers from a disability. And that's why they kept calling us minors. M-I-N-O-R. Minors. So now who has taken on the status of minor? Everyone that's doing the Bitcoin thing, they call themselves minors and they spell it with an E, M-I-N-E-R. But what they're really saying is we're going into the crypto space, the crypt, the virtual space, instead of being on the land. We've chosen to go that way. And now we're the minors. That's just a little side note. It says here, the fact that it carries something which may be a consideration for a new promise to pay so as to make an otherwise worthless promise a legal obligation makes it the subject of transfer by assignment, yes. Money and consideration are the same thing. When you look up the definition of consideration, it is a form of payment. And anything that the corporations say has always been a worthless promise. It's been worthless. But with the subjects, it's a legal obligation. And then we just give them DeLorean and say, here you go, and you give us whatever sub service or good, whatever is there. Okay. 
And then here, discharge by operation of law is where the discharge takes place, whether it was intended by the parties or not. And this is key. Thus, if a creditor appoints his debtor as his executor, the debt is discharged by operation of law because the executor cannot have an action against himself. That is what has been happening when we were using fiat in state court. They took on the role of the creditor, and then they would appoint the, us as the debtor. Okay? And then they would take on, they would switch, and then take on the role of the executor. Let me see. They would take on the role of, yes, they would, they would pretend to be the creditor, and then they would give us the role of the debtor, and then they would discharge the debt to us because we thought we were citizens. And that's why everyone who went in there in our fleet, we walked out with a bill owing something to someone. They were discharging debt to their court. And if we thought we were their court, then we would assume the debt. And that's by operation of law. That is trust law. We taught them that. The Larium fixes all of that by putting everyone in their proper place. The Larium is, is where the, the payment sets the law that's going to be used. And if we want Article Three and Constitution to be in full effect, delarium is how you get it there. We've proven that. We've demonstrated that and showed you the demonstration. Now all we have to do is keep going with that. Now, um, I want to, are there any questions or comments about legal tender and how Delarium fits that definition 100%. Okay, um, let's look at Wikipedia and what they put as legal tender, because I want to um, point some things out there. So this is Wikipedia, and again, we know Wikipedia is somewhat hypothecated. They're trying to get better as we wake up. They're trying to do things a little bit better, but, you know, they still have a, a way to go. But I wanted to read here legal tender just to, to point some things out where more sovereign delirium is concerned. Because, see, even by their definition of legal tender, fiat is not legal tender. But legal tender, it says, is a form of money that courts of law are required to recognize as satisfactory payment for any monetary debt. And again, we don't have debt, but those um, monochrome instruments that look like names, that's an instrument that we use. Those monochrome instruments where it said Pauline D. Ritchie or Pauline Denise Ritchie and it was in capital letters and monochrome ink, that's an instrument that we use. If it's in black ink, in other words, if it's issued by a corporation, that's not something we use. We lean that one on and send it to Guantanamo Bay for decapitation, which we've done on the public record on January 1st of, of, 20, uh, of 1442 or 1441, rather, which is 2021 on the civil calendar. 
and placed it on YouTube. We sent that black thing issued by them to Guantanamo Bay, and then we put the real instrument that we use in monochrome ink in its place. Now we can, it looks similar. It looks the same, really, except black means pale. So we were calling it something it wasn't supposed to be ever. So legal tender is a form of money that courts of law are required to recognize as satisfactory payment for any monetary debt. When me and the Empress did the demonstration, they that court in Miami, the, the inferior court, because then it becomes, it, it moves from being a corporation to an inferior court. In other words, we change the character of their behavior. We naturalize them and naturalize that resource. And what did they do? Extinguish the debt and fired, dismissed the policy enforcer, removed him from employment. And in that, in those cases, when they're removed from employment by us, they're going to be taken care of because they've agreed to follow the law. It says each jurisdiction determines what is legal tender. That's important. When we're, when we're extending our territory and enlarging our vast estate, that's how it's done by the use of our own money. That's extending our jurisdiction. See, some don't look at it that way, but any time fiat was starting to be accepted in different territories at different times, even on other lands, that was the United States Corporation Company extending their jurisdiction, their corporate jurisdiction. And that's another reason why that was the first thing they did, was go in somewhere, because, see, you can't let them in. Huh? You let them in, and what do they do? They wreak havoc and destroy a bunch of stuff, and then say, we can help you with that. We can help you with that. Here, take this fiat. And then what? Their jurisdiction is invoked. So we're doing the exact opposite of that. Everywhere that we go, we're making it better. It will be in better shape when we leave than when we got there. And leave just doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we leave anywhere because we're everywhere. Leave means you plan on returning. Leave means our presence stays and we go and do other things. So money is jurisdiction. Legal tender, they're talking about courts and jurisdictions right off the bat. That is why our courts were so important. That's why our courts were so important. Because legal tender, you can't even have legal tender if you don't have a court. And the court must be lawful so that legal and lawful meet there. And there's no further conflict between what is legal and what is lawful. That's been the issue. What's legal has not been what's lawful. And what's lawful has not been uh, put forth as legal, too. So there's been conflict on our land. And we're saying today, no, there's no more conflict. That which is legal is lawful. That which is lawful is legal when it's issued by us, period. So jurisdiction, each jurisdiction determines what is legal tender. That's why when, if no matter where we go, we turn it into an Article III court. The grocery store becomes an Article III court when we're in there. Yes, we have to do the demonstration there. But what else have we got to do? Our job is to govern the vast estate and all of its resources. It says, but essentially, right here back on the page, but essentially it is anything which when offered or tendered 
in payment of a debt extinguishes the debt. We're talking discharge again. And we're saying the corporations that we sent to Guantanamo Bay, the debt is going with them. There is no obligation on the creditor to accept the tendered payment. In other words, there's no obligation on us to accept uh, fiat as, as a tender in payment of anything. We have to accept the fiat first in order to tender it, right? So we're just saying we don't accept fiat. And I told Moore that, and some of them, about a week, about two weeks ago, Moore, some new Moors called me from, I think, Missouri Territory. And we talked for about an hour maybe, and they said, you know, well, can we send you some fiat in order to, you know, to assist in what you're doing? I said, no, send me some delarium. And the first thing out of his mouth was, wow, yes, we don't want that. We want some delarium. <laughs> if you're going to send something, send delarium. Why? Because our ability not to accept it means that we don't have to give it. That means we're not obligated to give that if we don't accept it. Because it has to keep going. That's what you're seeing right now. Everyone that's accepting fiat has to give it back out because that's the circle. When they talk about a circle church, they're talking about the route that, that, the, that the currency takes. Currency being frequencies and vibrations, the route that it's taking is a circle. It's in infinity. It's to infinity. Same thing with the fiat. What's going in, got to, it has to go out. And then we always talk about how our quote unquote money always left our communities and went out to other communities. More sovereign delarium fixes that too. Because guess what? Everywhere is our community. That's how you take care of the, the, the hybrids that, that are here. Delarium says you're a part of our community too. You're a part of us. We created you. And we don't have to judge and prosecute you when we're all on the same page with this money. So it says here on the screen, there is no obligation on the creditor to accept the tender payment, but the act of tendering the payment in legal tender discharges a debt. That's exactly what we're saying. We don't accept the uh, uh, fiat. Therefore, we're not going to give it. We accept delarium. So that's our form of payment, coming and going. Coming and going. What comes in? Delarium. What goes out? Delarium. The act of tendering the payment in legal tender discharges the debt. It must be legal tender. And they're saying here that legal tender is a form of money. What is money? Money is money, <laughs> not fiat. Gold back United States dollars is money. Gold United States dollars is money. And United States dollars, gold United States dollars is not Federal Reserve debt notes. That's why they have separate names. Now, more sovereign delarium, and this will help those who are who are looking at the banking piece. More sovereign delarium is one to one with the gold U.S. dollar. But one thing about the dollar that we need to know and to keep in mind is that the word dollar is a placeholder. A dollar is not an actual piece of paper. A dollar is a placeholder. So you have to put real money in the place of that dollar. So if they say something is $500, that means what form of payment are you going to use as your dollar? That's why all, a lot of other 
forms of, of payment have been called a dollar. You know, um, a German Yakum dollar or other forms of money have been called dollars because the word dollar is a placeholder. So when, they, when you see something that says $500, that means what are you going to give that's worth $500? What is your dollar? That's a question. What is your dollar? What do you use as one-to-one -one pegged to the dollar? Because they're always talking about something pegged to the dollar. Because they know that the dollar is a placeholder. But you got to put something lawful in there. You got to put something lawful in the place holder there. Islam in the chat. So more sovereign delirium takes it fills that space with lawful money, which is also legal tender. It says here on the screen, some jurisdictions allow contract law to overrule the status of legal tender. Have, don't we know that? Don't we know that? But in our case, they've been using the actual moors as surety for the fiat. If the Moors make a contract with them, then they they were using the Moors as, as surety. What are the contracts? Driver's license, social security number, um, passport, um, signing for things that are on their that are issued by them instead of giving them an affidavit. Contract law has, uh, and with the heirs, anyone that we contract with, it supersedes the other stuff, other laws and writing. That's why we terminated all corporate contracts, because it's our word that they were holding us to. So if we thought we were fake, those citizens, United States Corporation Company citizens, they were holding us to our word. That's a contract that, and then Morris have been saying, well, what about they're just ignoring the Constitution? Well, did you contract with them? Did you contract with them either verbally or in writing? Are you signing their stuff and using their script? Those are contracts. That's why their script has signatures, black ink, dead ink signatures on them with one capital letter at the beginning and the rest lowercase letters in capital seminary show minimum. Those are contracts. They know it. They know that. And if we pass their contract to someone, those papers, Thing. If we pass that contract to someone, that's the law that applies. If we pass that to a fake judge or a fake policy enforcer or we find their documents in dead ink, then that is the, the quote unquote law, and it's not the law, it's not real law coming from them, that applies. So it says here, uh, wait a minute, let me go back. Okay. It says here, some jurisdictions allow contract law to overrule the status of legal tender, allowing, for example, merchants to specify that they will not accept cash payments. And that's what you're seeing now is the Moors have stated that we want the debt off of our land. 
they were not going to move any debt off of our land and they were not going to stop accepting that fake fiat until we did it first. So we had to terminate all corporate contracts, print up our own money, and start using it. And now what do you see going into many of these places? They have, have it right there. I have photos of it. Does not accept cash, quote unquote, because that's not even real cash. That you can only use cards and swipe your card so that you're not touching that green Federal Reserve debt note. And again, gold dollars, gold United States dollars is not Federal Reserve debt note. Delarium is not Federal Reserve debt note because it's not debt. It's credit. And it's credit issued by the creditors that says the obligation is settled. The debt is discharged. Go in peace. Islam, Sister Light. Islam. Justice Frank. Let's talk about now substance for substance. Uncle Brian Sheep. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what is the substance? The substance is the, that red autograph that is the word of God. That's substance for substance. The word of God and that high seal, the highest seal in heaven and on earth is the right red thumbprint. That's why they kept getting signature after signature after signature in our sleep. Every five minutes we were signing something. Even if you're in handcuffs, they were trying to get you to sign stuff. That's the substance. Your consent, your energy, your will, your essence is the substance. Your word, your energy, that's the substance. Substance for substance. Delarium is substance because it's autographed by the air. It's, it's our agreement to be lawful on the land. It's our agreement and our word that says that everyone must follow the Constitution everyone, and that we will show them how to do that. We'll show them how to do it. So with Delarium, we made it so that anybody can print it, anybody, any of the Morris can print Delarium off. And we do know that there are some hy a hybrid who printed some off, and he's been trying to, you know, it's the same ones that come into the meeting and trying to disrupt the energy. And anybody that saw this hybrid, he had on a mask and a, and a baseball cap, and he was holding up some DeLorean that he had signed in red, and he put a capital A and all of that. Anyone who saw that foolishness right there, if that got you upset, then please check your energy. They can't do anything with DeLorean that we don't allow. One minute they're saying, let's see you do a demonstration with it. The next minute they're holding it up like, make up your mind. They're just trying to disrupt energy. Don't worry about that. That's not even a thing. Not a thing. We just keep going, keep going, moving forward, doing what we're supposed to be doing and using the lion to do it. Um, so um, the this legal tender from Wikipedia, I've also put that in the link to it in the chat so that you can just read through it. We won't go all the way through it. Um, but again, it says here in some, uh, right here, in some jurisdictions, and again, talking about legal tender, all they're talking about is courts and jurisdiction, courts and jurisdiction, courts and jurisdiction. It 
It says here, coins and banknotes are usually defined as legal tender in many countries. We just talked about banknotes, didn't we? Delarium is considered a banknote because it's coming from a bank and it has an autograph on it. And again, they're at the state of Morocco. They're not in any corporation company. It says here, in some jurisdictions, legal tender can be refused as payment if no debt exists prior to the time of payment. That's what you're seeing going on on the land right now. A lot of these corporations are refusing uh, Federal Reserve debt notes because we've extinguished the debt. And then we prepay for everything. So when we give Delarium for whatever it is, we're prepaying, again, for new things. The prophet said, do all old business in your old name and all new business in your new name. Well, all that's saying is all of everything that was previous, all the previous obligations, the Constitution will take care of that. And then in your new name, we use the Larium to take care of anything that we're receiving now, that we're accepting and getting now in, in payment of any debt. And when he says old name, again, jurisdiction, we it couldn't be waived even by consent of both parties. And again, we, we're not sure that he said that. We just heard that's what he said. And we've read that, oh, this is what they say the prophet said. That's why it's up to us to ultimately use our own study, 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 like the prophet said. And then hear what the ancestral energies within us have to say. We honor the prophet Nobudu Ali and all that he put forth and all that he said. And he said it himself, what, from what we heard. He said, I gave you everything you need to save a nation. Now take it and save yourself. Because he knew we're the nation, we're the government, each one of us. We need to rebut everything that's out there. And there was a... Um, There was uh, some something written regarding acceptance that I wanted to show you as well. And I'm trying to think where was that. I believe it was, uh, ah, yes. Justice Yezurel, uh I wanted to thank you for the Cracking the Code book. Okay, because, um, and I'll put the link to that book in the chat as well so that you all can look at it. And we'll, we'll talk about some of the things in this book, uh, on our next call. Uh, oh, and I think, yes, he was, Justice, uh, Justice Amos, he was affirming acceptance. Yes, absolutely. Um, this Cracking the Cold book, that may or may not, that link may or may not work. Um, let's see. I'll just Google, Google it and put the link in the chat. Okay, um, so that you all can see this book, which is, because I went through the book and I saw uh, something about acceptance in there. Just one moment.
Okay. Here's the PDF for that. Um, just if, if you all have that PDF and you have the link to it, can you put it in the chat, please? Because, let me see. I want to be sure that I'm putting the right one in there. But in, in this book, I believe it's on page... Nine. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Page thirty-nine. I wanted to read you really quickly. Uh, with regard to, it talks about um, America, quote unquote, America, being under occupation. And it was because, uh, there, here it is right here, page, it says page 2 of 26. Let me put this on the screen really quickly and then we'll, we'll, we'll end here uh, with this. Um, revelation here that we we've, we've known our teachers have spoken about it um it says here and again this is past tense because we're not we and this has nothing to do with us we're not under military occupation uh the state the sovereign state of morocco and this land is not under military occupation america the uh republic was under military occupation until we stood up. But it says here, script, paper money issued for temporary use in an emergency. That's what they issued, military script, military script. Thank you, Justice Theodore. He put the, uh, the link to cracking the code in, in the, um, in the chat. So it says here, America is currently under military occupation by the conquering foreign creditors of the Federal Reserve, IMF, and its garrison troops, the British Esquires of the Bench and the Bar Association. Now, again, this is not a, uh, under occupation. We're not under occupation. Uh, and, and the Federal Reserve and the IMF Corporations are not creditors. They're debtors. We're the creditors in red and all lowercase letters. Okay. So um, it says the term mission statement is strictly a military designator, and any organization with a mission statement is a military unit. Now think about how many corporations come up with a mission statement. That's a military unit. It says all 15 bureaus of the Puerto Rico-based Department of the Treasury, including Internal Revenue Service, Securities and Exchange Commission, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, all state tax agencies and all bar associations operate under a mission statement. Esquires, judges, and attorneys are military officers of the Crown, another front for the Federal Reserve IMS. And this is all corporate language. Uh, we've extinguished all of this here on our land. It says, carrying out the overall mission of the bar, it is ironic that the various branches of the United States military do not tout a mission statement. Okay? And it says a little further down, um, it talks about um, in Black Law Dictionary, 
the Black Law Dictionary is copyrighted British law and like all the rest, private, non-public domain property. Attorney, strictly one who is designated to transact business for another. That's why we don't use attorneys because the first thing they're going to do is talk about military scripts and how are you how are you going to quote unquote pay them? That's the first thing attorneys talk about because they need to get that military script going. That's why consuls are mentioned in the Constitution because we're not under that. And we don't, as when you're doing consular work, you don't, you, you do not use military scripts. You use dollarium or gold or silver or gold United States dollars. That's those gold circular United States dollars that are made out of gold. That's what is used. Okay. So, um, and again, that's from cracking the code. Uh, that book is really good. Thank you, Justice Jezreel, for that. And Justice uh, Theodore, thank you for the link as well. So with that being said, um, we're just following the law. And not following the law, we are the law. We're just putting the law forth. Delarium is the law. And not only is it lawful, it's legal. We've proven that by looking at the definitions of what's legal and what happens when you give legal species. There is a discharge of the debt in accordance with 192, House Joint Resolution 192 from 1933. That's really what that was supposed to be. The Federal Reserve uh, Corporation and the Federal Reserve and, and its Federal Reserve debt note and the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, according to the corporation, was only supposed to be a temporary measure. It was only supposed to be for two years, supposedly. But we know they don't keep their word. We know the corporations lie. So we have to do what we're doing. Okay. With that being said, are there any other um, any other wisdom or experiences or anything that you want to add to what we've been saying here uh, with regard to the Delarium, etc. Islam. Islam, nobility. Justice Frank L. Uh, the hybrid promise worded by, he said he's not going to mess with you today. He's learning too. How about that? Yes. yes. That's how I like that yes. boy. He always called me. He bothered me. Anyway, let me see. But uh, he, he, he kept his word and word is mine. You tell that hybrid. I, I love him. I love him. We love. we love the hybrids. We're not mad at them. We're not mad at them. But I think, you know, once they see that nobody gets a sandwich until we all, everybody get in their rightful place. Everybody get in the rightful place. We love them. Uh, you know, we knew that it was just a matter of time anyway. We knew that. That's why we just bear with them. <laughs> bear with them. So with that being said, um, I'll say this about that too. The closer that we got to this part that we're this place that we're at, we knew they were going to to step aside. We knew that. But see, all along they have known that they can cut up and act a complete monkey as long as we keep talking about using their Federal Reserve debt notes to do stuff. That's something, huh? Yes, it is. As long as we kept talking about that instead of getting serious about using our own money, they knew they could cut up and act a complete, you know, beneath, like acting outside of the character of nobility. I know that. Which they, you know, outside of the character of a subject. But we knew it was just a matter of time, and he said that because we've been able to put a, put the kibosh on that, as they say. We just lock, boot them out, lock the meeting, keep going. 
you know. Um, and then keep doing what we're doing. That's all we have to do more. So with that being said, thank you, Justice Frank. Appreciate you so much. Glad you're, you know, that you can see through what they were trying to do when they were targeting certain ones. You know, uh, they started they started with us, and they already know we ain't having it. We're gonna keep going. We're not gonna. We no one. We're unstoppable. Literally, unstoppable. So, yeah. With that being said, peace and grand rising to the sovereign, original, indigenous, ancient, natural, divine air, Islam. Islam. That's it. Islam. 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 Peace and love. Islam. Peace and love, more. Much love. Much love. Islam, 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 Islam,